Howard Thomas Odom, September 1, 1924 to September 11, 2002, usually cited as H. T. Odom, was an American ecologist. He is known for his pioneering work on ecosystem ecology, and for his provocative proposals for additional laws of thermodynamics, informed by his work on general systems theory. Biography <inaudible> 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 Odom was the third child of Howard W. Odom, an American sociologist, and his wife Anna Louise Kranz Odom (1888–1965). He was the younger brother of Eugene Odom. Their father encouraged his sons to go into science and to develop new techniques to contribute to social progress. Howard learned his early scientific lessons about birds from his brother, about fish and the philosophy of biology while working after school for the marine zoologist Robert Coker, and about electrical circuits from the boy electrician by Alfred Powell Morgan. Howard Thomas studied biology at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where he published his first paper while still an undergraduate. His education was interrupted for three years by his World War II service with the Army Air Force in Puerto Rico and the Panama Canal Zone where he worked as a tropical meteorologist. After the war, he returned to the University of North Carolina and completed his B.S. in Zoology Phi Beta Kappa in 1947. In 1947, Odom married Virginia Wood, they had two children together. After her 1973 death, he married Elizabeth C. Odom in 1974, she had four children from her previous marriage. Odom's advice on how to manage a blended family was to be sure to keep talking, Elizabeth's was to hold back on discipline and new rules. In 1950, Howard earned his Ph.D. in zoology at Yale University, under the guidance of G. Evelyn Hutchinson. His dissertation was titled The Biogeochemistry of Strontium, with discussion on the ecological integration of elements. This step took him from his early interest in ornithology and brought him into the emerging field of systems ecology. He made a meteorological analysis of the global circulation of strontium, and anticipated in the late 1940s the view of the Earth as one great ecosystem. While at Yale, Howard began his lifelong collaborations with his brother Eugene. In 1953, they published the first English-language textbook on systems ecology, Fundamentals of Ecology. Howard wrote the chapter on energetics, which introduced his energy circuit language. They continued to collaborate in research as well as writing for the rest of their lives. For Howard, his energy systems language which he called, energies was itself a collaborative tool. From 1956 to 1963, Odom worked as the director of the Marine Institute of the University of Texas. During this time, he became aware of the interplay of ecological energetic and economic forces. He taught at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where he was in the Department of Zoology, and one of the professors in the new curriculum of marine sciences until 1970. That year he moved to the University of Florida, where he taught at the Environmental Engineering Sciences Department, founded and directed the Center for Environmental Policy, and founded the university's Center for Wetlands in 1973. It was the first center of its kind in the world that is still in operation today. Odom continued this work for 26 years until his retirement in 1996. 
In the 1960s to 1970s Odom was also chairman of the International Biological Programs Tropical Biome Planning Committee. He was supported by large contracts with the United States Atomic Energy Commission, resulting in participation by nearly 100 scientists, who conducted radiation studies of a tropical rainforest His featured project at University of Florida in the 1970s was on recycling treated sewage into cypress swamps. This was one of the first projects to explore the now widespread approach of using wetlands as water quality improvement ecosystems. This is one of his most important contributions to the beginnings of the field of ecological engineering. In his last years, Odom was Graduate Research Professor Emeritus and Director of the Center for Environmental Policy. He was an avid birdwatcher in both his professional and personal life. The Ecological Society awarded Odom its Mercer Award to recognize his contributions to the study of the coral reef on Eniwetok Atoll. Odom also received the French Prix de Vie, and the Crawford Prize of the Royal Swedish Academy of Science, considered the Nobel equivalent for bioscience, which was not originally honored by Nobel himself. Charles A. S. Hall has described Odom one of the most innovative and important thinkers of our time. He has noted that Howard Odom, either alone or with his brother Eugene, received essentially all of international prizes awarded to ecologists. The only higher education institute to award honorary degrees to both Odom brothers was the Ohio State University, which honored H.T. in 1995 and Jean in 1999. Odom's contributions to this field have been recognized by the Mars Society. They named their experimental station the H.T. Odom Greenhouse at the suggestion of his former student Patrick Kangas. Kangas and his student, David Blursch, made significant contributions to the design of the wastewater recycling system on the station. Odom's students have furthered his work at institutions around the world, most notably Mark Brown at the University of Florida, David Tilley and Patrick Kangas at the University of Maryland, Daniel Campbell at the United States Environmental Protection Agency, Enrique Ortega at the UNICAMP in Brazil, and Sergio Algiati at the University of Siena. Work done at these institutions continues to evolve and propagate the Odom's concept of emergy. His former students Bill Mitch, Ohio State University, Robert Costanza, Portland State University, and Scott W. Nixon, University of Rhode Island, are among a cadre of former students who have been recognized internationally for their contributions to ecological engineering, ecological economics, ecosystem science, wetland ecology, estuarine ecology, ecological models modeling, and related fields. Topic. Work, an overview Odom left a large legacy in many fields associated with ecology, systems, and energetics. He studied ecosystems all over the world, and pioneered the study of several areas, some of which are now distinct fields of research. According to Hall, 1995, P. X. Odom published one of the first significant papers in each of the following areas. Ecological modeling Odom 1960A. Ecological Engineering Odom et al. 1963 Ecological Economics Odom 1971 Estuarine Ecology Odom and Hoskins 1958 Tropical Ecosystems Ecology Odom and Pigeon 1970 
general systems theory. Autumn's contributions to these and other areas are summarized below. Odom also wrote on radiation ecology, systems ecology, unified science, and the microcosm. He was one of the first to discuss the use of ecosystems for life support function in space travel. Some have suggested that Odom was technocratic in orientation, while others believe that he sided with those calling for new values. Topic. Ecological modeling Topic. A new integrative approach in ecology In his 1950 PhD thesis, H. T. Odom gave a novel definition of ecology as the study of large entities ecosystems at the natural level of integration." Hence, in the traditional role of an ecologist, one of Odom's doctoral aims was to recognize and classify large cyclic entities ecosystems. However another of his aims was to make predictive generalizations about ecosystems, such as the whole world for example. For Odom, as a large entity, the world constituted a revolving cycle with high stability. It was the presence of stability which, Odom believed, enabled him to talk about the teleology of such systems. Moreover, at the time of writing his thesis, Odom felt that the principle of natural selection was more than empirical, because it had a teleological, that is a stability over time component. And as an ecologist interested in the behavior and function of large entities over time, Odom therefore sought to give a more general statement of natural selection so that it was equally applicable to large entities as it was to small entities traditionally studied in biology. Hence, Odom also had the aim of extending the scope and generality of natural selection to include large entities such as the world. This extension relied on the definition of an entity as a combination of properties that have some stability with time. Odom's approach was motivated by Lotka's ideas on the energetics of evolution. <laughs> <laughs> Ecosystem simulation In writing a history of the ecosystem concept, Golly noted that Odom tended to think in the form of analogies, and gave the example, "...if the world is a heat engine, then..." In this vein, Odom can be understood as extending the dynamical analogies which establish the analogies between electrical, mechanical, acoustical, magnetic and electronic systems to include ecological systems. Odom used an analog of electrical energy networks to model the energy flow pathways of ecosystems. Odom's analog electrical models had a significant role in the development of his approach to systems and have been recognized as one of the earliest instances of systems ecology. Electron flow in the electrical network represented the flow of material, e.g., carbon, in the ecosystem. Charge in a capacitor was analogous to storage of a material, and the model was scaled to the ecosystem of interest by adjusting the size size of electrical component. Topic. Ecological analogue of Ohm's law In the 1950s Odom introduced his electrical circuit diagrams of ecosystems to the Ecological Society of America. He claimed that energy was driven through ecological systems by an Ecoforce. Analogous to the role of voltage in electrical circuits, Odom developed an analog of Ohm's law, which aimed to be a representation of energy flows through ecosystems. 
In terms of steady-state thermodynamics, Ohm's law can be considered a special case of a more general flux law, where the flux J display style J is proportional to the driving thermodynamic force X display style X with conductivity C display style C that is J equals C X Display style J equals C X. Kangas states that Odom then also concluded that as thermodynamic systems, ecosystems should also obey the force flux law. Hence Ohm's law and passive electrical analog circuits can be used to simulate ecosystems. Ibid. In this simulation, Odom attempted to derive an ecological analog for electrical voltage. Voltage, or driving force, is related to something we have measured for years, the biomass, in pounds per acre. The analogous concept required is the biomass activity, that is, the thermodynamic thrust, which may be linear. Exactly what this is in nature is still uncertain, as it is a new concept. Such a consideration led Odom to ask two important methodological questions, one what is the electrical significance of a function observed in nature? Two, given an electrical unit in a circuit, what is it in the ecological system? For example, what is a diode in nature? One needs a diode to allow biomass to accumulate after the voltage of the sun has gone down. Otherwise the circuit reverses. Higher organisms like fish are diodes. The Silver Springs study Silver Springs is a common type of spring-fed stream in Florida, with a constant temperature and chemical composition. The study Howard Odom conducted here was the first complete analysis of a natural ecosystem. Odom started with an overall model and in his early work used a diagramming methodology very similar to the Sankey diagrams used in chemical process engineering. In this model energy and matter flows through an ecosystem, H are herbivores, C are carnivores, T C are top carnivores, and D are decomposers. Squares represent biotic pools and ovals are fluxes or energy or nutrients from the system. Started from that overall model Odom, "...mapped in detail all the flow routes to and from the stream." He measured the energy input of sun and rain, and of all organic matter, even those of the bread the tourists threw to the ducks and fish, and then measured the energy that gradually left the spring. In this way he was able to establish the stream's energy budget. Energetics. <inaudible> 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 Topic. Ecological and biological energetics Around 1955 Odom directed studies into radioecology which included the effects of radiation on the tropical rainforest at El Verde, Puerto Rico Odom and, Pigeon, and the coral reefs and ocean ecology at Eniwetok Atoll. The Odom brothers were approached by the Atomic Energy Commission to undertake a detailed study of the atoll after nuclear testing. Apparently the atoll was sufficiently radioactive that upon their arrival the Odoms were able to produce an autoradiographic image of a coral head by placing it on photographic paper. These studies were early applications of energy concepts to ecological systems. 
they were exploring the implications of the laws of thermodynamics when used in these new settings. From this view, biogeochemical cycles are driven by radiant energy. Odom expressed the balance between energy input and output as the ratio of production P to respiration R, PR. He classified water bodies based on their PR ratios, this separated autotrophic from heterotrophic ecosystems. His measurements of flowing water metabolism were measurements of whole systems. Odom was measuring the community as a system, not adding up the metabolism of the components as Lindemann and many others had done. This reasoning appears to have followed that of Odom's doctoral supervisor, G. E. Hutchinson who expressed the view that if a community were an organism then it must have a form of metabolism. However Golly notes that H. T. Odom attempted to go beyond the reporting of mere ratios, a move which resulted in the first serious disagreement in systems energetics. Topic. Maximum power theory and the proposal for additional laws of thermodynamics, energetics In a controversial move, Odom, together with Richard Pinkerton at the time physicist at the University of Florida, was motivated by Alfred J. Lopka's articles on the energetics of evolution, and subsequently proposed the theory that natural systems tend to operate at an efficiency that produces the maximum power output, not the maximum efficiency. This theory in turn motivated Odom to propose maximum power as a fundamental thermodynamic law. Further to this Odom also mooted two more additional thermodynamic laws see energetics, but there is far from consensus in the scientific community about these proposals, and many scientists have never heard of H. T. Odom or his views. Topic. Energies, energy systems language By the end of the 1960s Odom's electronic circuit ecological simulation models were replaced by a more general set of energy symbols. When combined to form systems diagrams, these symbols were considered by Odom and others to be the language of the macroscope which could portray generalized patterns of energy flow. Describing such patterns and reducing ecosystem complexities to flows of energy, Odom believed, would permit discovery of general ecosystem principles. Some have attempted to link it with the universal scientific language projects which have appeared throughout the history of natural philosophy. Kitching claimed that the language was a direct result of working with analog computers, and reflected an electrical engineer's approach to the problem of system representation. Because of its electrical analogy, the Odom system is relatively easy to turn into mathematical equations. If one is building a model of energy flow then certainly the Odom system should be given serious consideration. Due to the focus on systems thinking, Odom's language appears to be similar in approach to the systems modeling language recently developed by INCOSE an international systems engineering body. <laughs> <laughs> Energy quality In taking an energy-based view of hierarchical organization Odom also developed further the systems ecology understanding of energy quality. Emergy <inaudible> 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 In the 1990s in the latter part of his career H.T. Odom together with David M. Sciencemen developed the ideas of emergy, as a specific use of the term embodied energy. Some consider the concept of 
emergy, sometimes briefly defined as energy memory, as one of Odom's more significant contributions. However the concept is neither free from controversy nor without its critics. Odom looked at natural systems as having been formed by the use of various forms of energy in the past. Emergy is a measure of energy used in the past and thus is different from a measure of energy now. The unit of emergy past available energy use is the mjoule, as distinguished from joules used for available energy remaining now. This was then conceived as a principle of maximum empower which might explain the evolution of self-organizing open systems. However this principle has only been demonstrated in a few experiments and is not widely recognized in the scientific community. <coughs> Ecosystem ecology and systems ecology For J. B. Hagen, the maximum power principle, and the stability principle could be easily translated into the language of homeostasis and cybernetics systems. Hagen claims that the feedback loops in ecosystems, were, for Odom, analogous to the kinds of feedback loops diagrammed in electronic circuits and cybernetic systems this approach represented the migration of cybernetic ideas into ecology and led to the formulation of systems ecology. In Odom's work these concepts form part of what Hagen called an "...ambitious and idiosyncratic attempt to create a universal science of systems." Ibid. The ecosystem concept Macroscope Hagen has identified the systems thinking of Odom as a form of holistic thinking. Odom contrasted the holistic thinking of systems science with reductionistic microscopic thinking, and used the term «macroscope» to refer to the holistic view, which was a kind of «detail eliminator», allowing a simple diagram to be created. <laughs> Microcosms H. T. Odom was a pioneer in his use of small closed and open ecosystems in classroom teaching. These small ecosystems were often constructed from fish tanks or bottles and have been called microcosms. Odom's microcosm studies influenced the design of Biosphere 2. Hierarchical organization In observing the way higher order trophic levels have a control function in ecosystems, H. T. Odom arrived at the concept he termed hierarchical organization. <laughs> Ecological economics Ecological economics is now an active field between economics and ecology with annual conferences, international societies and an international journal. From 1956 to 1963 H. T. Odom worked as director of the Marine Institute of the University of Texas. During this time Odom became aware of the interplay of ecological energetic and economic forces. He therefore funded the research into the use of conventional economic approaches to quantify dollar values of ecological resources for recreational, treatment and other uses. 
This research calculated the potential value of primary production per base surface area. For Hall, the importance of Odom's work came through his integration of systems, ecology, and energy with economics, together with Odom's view that economics can be evaluated on objective terms such as energy rather than on a subjective, willingness to pay basis. Topic: Ecological Engineering. Ecological engineering is an emerging field of study between ecology and engineering concerned with the designing, monitoring and constructing of ecosystems. The term ecological engineering was first coined by Howard T. Odom in 1962 well before he worked at the University of Florida. Ecological engineering, he wrote, is, "...those cases where the energy supplied by man is small relative to the natural sources but sufficient to produce large effects in the resulting patterns and processes." Ecological engineering, as a practical field, was then developed by his former graduate student Bill Mitch who started and continues to edit the Standard Journal in the field and helped to start both international and U.S. societies devoted to ecological engineering, and has written two textbooks on the subject one of H.T. Odom's last papers was his assessment of ecological engineering that was published in the journal Ecological Engineering in 2003, a year after Odom died. <laughs> <laughs> General systems theory Odom was elected the 30th president in 1991 of the International Society for the Systems Sciences ISSS.org. This was the professional society that earlier was named the International Society for General Systems Research. He presented many papers on the topic at its annual conferences as well as edited the last published General Systems Yearbook. The second, revised edition of his major lifework was retitled Ecological and General Systems, An Introduction to Systems Ecology Some of his energy models and simulations contained general systems components. Odom has been described as a «technocratic optimist». His approach was significantly influenced by his father who was also an advocate of viewing the social world through the various lenses of physical science. Within the processes on Earth, H. T. Odom 1989 viewed humans as playing a central role, he said that the "...human is the biosphere's programmatic and pragmatic information processor for maximum performance." Topic Publications H. T. Odom wrote some fifteen books and three hundred papers, and a Festschrift volume Maximum Power, The Ideas and Applications of H. T. Odom 1995 was published in honor of his work. Odom was also honored by the journal Ecological Engineering for his contributions to the field of ecological engineering and ecology in general in recognition of his 70th birthday. This publication included over 25 letters from distinguished scientists from all over the world including Bill Mitch lead editorial, John Allen, Robert Yelanowicz, Robert Bayers, Ariel Lugo, Marth Gilliland, Sandra Brown, Ramon Margalef, Paul Rissa, Jean Odom, Kathy Yule, Kenneth Watt, Pat Kangas, Sven Jorgensen, Bob Knight, Ru Song Wong, John Teal, Frank Golly, Anne Marie and Bengt O. Jansen, Joan Browder, Carl Folk, Richard Wiegert, Scott Nixon, Jean Turner, John Todd, and James Zacchetto. Books 
2007 Environment, Power and Society for the 21st Century, The Hierarchy of Energy, with Mark T. Brown, Columbia University Press. 2001 A Prosperous Way Down, Principles and Policies, with Elizabeth C. Odom, University Press of Colorado. 2000, with E.C. Odom, Modeling for All Scales, An Introduction to System Simulation, Academic Press. 1999, Heavy Metals in the Environment, Using Wetlands for Their Removal. 1999, Biosphere 2, Research, Past and Present, with, Bruno D. V. Marino 1996, Environmental Accounting, EMERGY and Environmental Decision Making 1993, Ecological Microcosms, with Robert J. Bayers 1984, Cypress Swamps with Catherine C. Yule 1983, Systems Ecology, An Introduction. 1981, Energy Basis for Man and Nature, with Elizabeth C. Odom. 1970, with Robert F. Pigeon Eds, A Tropical Rain Forest, A Study of Irradiation and Ecology at El Verde, Puerto Rico, United States Atomic Energy Commission, National Technical Information Service. 1971 Environment, Power and Society, 1971 1967, ed., Work Circuits and System Stress, in Young, Symposium on Primary Productivity and Mineral Cycling, University of Maine Press. 1953, Fundamentals of Ecology, with Eugene P. Odom, 1st edition. Topic articles Selection 1998, Emergy Evaluation, paper presented at the International Workshop on Advances in Energy Studies, Energy Flows in Ecology and Economy, Porto Venere, Italy, May 27. 1997, EMERGY Evaluation and Transformity, in Creeth ed. CRC Handbook of Mechanical Engineering 1992, Environmental Generalist, in Acta Scientifica. 1991, Emergy and Biogeochemical Cycles, in Rossi and Tiesi ed. Physical Chemistry. 1989, Emergy and Evolution, in 33rd Annual Meeting of the International Society for the Systems Sciences, UK. 1989, Comments and Thanks to Students and Associates, Handout on the Occasion of the Celebration in Chapel Hill, N.C., in, Advances in Understanding Ecological Systems, August 31–September 2. 1984, Embodied Energy and the Welfare of Nations, Janssen ed., Integration o Economy in Ecology. 1977, The Ecosystem, Energy, and Human Values, in, Zygon, Vol. 12 Issue 2 page 109–133, 1975, Energy Quality and Carrying Capacity of the Earth, Response at Prize Awarding Ceremony of Institut Le V, Paris, 1973, Energy, Ecology and Economics, Royal Swedish Academy of Science, in, AMBIO, 2 6, 220 227, 1963, with W. L. Slyer, R. J. Bayers, and N. Armstrong, Experiments with Engineering of Marine Ecosystems, in, PUBL. Inst. Marine Sci. Univ. Tex. 9 374 403. 1963, Limits of Remote Ecosystems Containing Man, in, The American Biology Teacher. 25 6, 429–443. 
1960A, Ecological Potential and Analog Circuits for the Ecosystem, in, Aimer, Psi. 48-1-8. 1960B, 10 Classroom Sessions in Ecology in, The American Biology Teacher. 22 71-78. 1958, with C. M. Hoskin, Comparative Studies of the Metabolism of Texas Bays, in, PUBL. Inst. March Psi, Univ, Tex, 516-46. 1955, with E.P. Odom, Trophic Structure and Productivity of a Windward Coral Reef Community on Eniwetok Atoll, in, Ecological Monographs, 35, 291-320. 1950, The Biogeochemistry of Strontium, with discussion on the ecological integration of elements, a dissertation presented to the faculty of the Graduate School of Yale University in candidacy for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. 